Good afternoon. My name is Alina Shotsova. I am a discrimination attorney from New York. In today's legally speaking seminar, I would like to talk to you about new anti-harassment, sexual harassment policies adopted by New York State and New York City. Uh, what's important about these policies is that um, they extend their reach not only to the employees, but also to independent contractors and people who uh, provide services to the employer at the employer's workplace. Also, the policies make it clear that sexual harassment is prohibited not only in the actual workplace, but also, uh, let's say, during commute, in, 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 during commute or, or during some uh, social events that employer organizes, basically extend um, anything in any place related to the uh, employer's uh, employer's business. So what's happening nowadays is that every employer in New York State must provide training to uh, employees regarding sexual harassment and must have a policy regarding sexual harassment and uh, there are certain requirements to the, that policy. For example, it has to have a procedure um, as to how an, an employee can complain about the harassment, where to complain, that the complaint will be considered, that uh, will be a decision on the complaint. It's very important. Um, so the training has to be interactive. It has to provide examples. Uh, that's also very important. Each employ employer in New York City, starting April uh, 1st, I believe, 2019, will have to provide such training within 90 days to all new hires. Uh, and uh, in New York State, within a year of the new hire. Another important change, arbitration mandatory arbitration is prohibited, meaning that you cannot uh, put as a condition of employment uh, provision that an employee has to arbitrate her or his sexual harassment claims. However, there are exceptions to that. Exceptions um, under federal rules of laws, I'm sorry, and exceptions under collective bargaining agreement. And I tell you that most of the time or times or whatever that it will be collective bargaining agreement that will have the arbitration clause in it so i'm not sure how effective this particular particular uh, provision of the new rules would be non-disclosure agreements also will be disfavored they cannot be at a, a, a regular part of the agreement of the settlement agreement nowadays um, if uh, an employer and employee reached an agreement to settle the sexual harassment claim, but it still may be included if it's an employee's preference. Just like in age discrimination cases, employee will have to be provided at least 21 days to consider the agreement and will be able to revoke the agreement within seven days after signing the agreement if the claim is related to sexual harassment. And um, that's, in a nutshell, what's, what's happening. Now, important part is that this, uh, th this new regulations, these new regulations, they extend only to sexual harassment, but there are other forms of discrimination that are happening or may happen at workplace. And it's important to know that uh, uh, you still have rights under those uh, provisions of law. The only difference is that for other forms of regulations, you also will need to take into consideration employer size. Um, a sexual harassment protection extends to any employer, even if you have only one employee. Most of other bases uh, will cover uh, only if an employer has at least four employees in New York State or 15 on the federal level. So that's important. And you can read more about the, I actually have the 
uh, example policy uh, and uh, sexual harassment policy um, that I downloaded from New York State website on my website or harassmentattorneys.com and you can read more about discrimination and uh, different ways the courts look at discrimination on the website as well uh, workharassmentattorneys.com thank you